All right, so if I am going at a fast clip, that's because of, yeah, it's, it's because we have to get through a whole chapter. Now, let me explain things between your books. And it's funny, when I was looking at the default slides for the OpenStax version, this is chapter 14, which lines up with the Martini Anatomy and Physiology book. So if you look here, I mean, if you, now look at how your actual online book is. Notice that there's a difference. It's not the same thing. So this is, if you notice that everything from this point on, like 13, 14, 15, 16, is kind of scattered around in the OpenStax version, that's because it is. that They pretty much took everything from these chapters and shuffled it around. That's why it's kind of rough. But at the same time, is Martini necessarily better? So let me just tell you like how the Martini book is organized. So for chapter 13, it focused on the spinal cord and spinal nerves. And chapter, chapter 14 focused on the brain and cranial nerves. Now, chapter 15 is probably my least favorite chapter in the whole Martini book. Because why? Well, pretty much Martini, what they did is like, okay, everything that's not the brain and spinal cord but is part of the nervous system and isn't part of the autonomic nervous system, it's still important. Let's make a chapter out of it anyway. So chapter 15 is also kind of weird in the Martini version. So what? this is the best I can explain it. Martini chapter 15 is kind of like everything here except the brain and spinal cord and everything here except the brain and spinal cord. So basically, how do you get things from the stimuli to the central nervous system and how to carry signals from the central nervous system to motor output. So that's kind of what chapter 15 is like in the Martini book. And again, the OpenStax version is kind of, if you looked at the material we're covering today and in the previous lectures, they're kind of spread across 13, 14, 15, and 16 in the OpenStax version. All right, enough about that in the textbook. Let's get talked. Okay, so this is, I, because chapter 15 is kind of a weird beast, I'm pretty much keeping it limited to why covering the lecture. So afferent or I mean afferent, but I say afferent just to make sure you don't confuse it with efferent. So afferent and sensory signals. So basically what do you have? You have all those changes in the environment and these can be in your internal, your insides or your external environment. What you're seeing right now, what you're hearing right now, what you're feeling right now. So basically these changes are called stimuli. Then you have sensory receptor cells. These are neurons. And they detect the stimuli. So they detect the stimuli, they depolarize, and they carry the, do those chemical changes across their cell membrane called action potentials. Again, if you don't know what those are, go back to the previous lectures. Now these action potentials are carried on to across synapses to other neurons and other cells. And these are propagated, from, so it's kind of like a relay. They're passing the baton. They're passing these electrical signals along these neurons. So when you see anima animations of the nervous system, that's why you kind of see like little electric sparks traveling across. It's trying to get, get that kind of idea across. So these are polysynaptic pathways because why you have neurons forming synapses with other neurons. So it's just like a relay race of neurons. And then finally it ends up at the central nervous system. So what are the five senses? We're talking about afferent and sensory signals. So you probably remember this all the way from elementary school. So the five senses include vision, audition, so sight, hearing, and now we're going to tell you the more physiological terms. So smell is the same thing as olfaction. Gustation is the physiological term for taste. And then you probably know of somatic sensation or touch. Now, here's the thing, just like how you learned in back in unit two for exam two that they're like, do you remember, do you remember like in elementary school when they said like the, the head bones connected to the neck bone and, but the thing is that, is there just one neck bone? Is there a head bone? No. The, the thing is that there, this is where you have, it's, I hate somebody once accused me like, you're ruining my childhood. You're telling me this is all fake. Well, the thing is that there are more than five senses. There's more than five senses. So there's proprioception, which we talked about, your sense of body position, ping, temperature, pressure, vibration. And touch is actually a very complex sense. It can be broken down into di different types of touch. Like fine touch is like you can tell when, when it's like a mosquito or fly lands on you. You know where to swat because you know where it's located. Crude touch, you know something's touching you, but not necessarily where it is. And light touch might be something brushing against you. So there's different 
types of touch and type of, types of receptors for those touches. So this is what we had to talk about, general versus special senses. So what's the difference? Well, general senses and special senses. So general senses are senses you can are widespread throughout your body. So things like all those somato sensations and senses of touch. Well, can you feel something touch is touching your cheek? Can you feel something's touching your arm? Can you feel something's touching your thigh? Yeah, so you have a sense of touch all throughout your body. So this is, things like touch, they are general senses. Or things like pain, can you have feel something a pain in your eye? Can you feel a pain in your mouth? Can you feel a pain in your throat? Can you feel a pain in your lower back? Yeah, so pain is also a general sense as well. Now, special senses, what makes them special is that they are located in specialized organs. So can you detect light with your elbow? Can you smell things with your eye? Not really, right? So you have specialized organs with these in special senses. So general senses like proprioception, again, that fancy term meaning roughly body position. And then pain, temperature, pressure, vibration, and touch. So they're general because you can feel the, all of these at multiple sites along your body. Whereas special senses, how do you know which ones are special senses? Well, back to the five senses you would probably learn in elementary school. So they include vision, audition, olfaction, gustation. And wait, touch is now a general sense. Is there another special sense? So the great thing is that... Now it's no longer the five senses, but the five special senses. So there are five special senses in human and equilibrium or balance. And remember that cranial nerve eight, that vestibulocochlear nerve? Well, it involves both audition and equilibrium, but we are getting to that at the end of the semester.